Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors mm -hmm. <laughs> and shapes. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving fifteen percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio in high fidelity. You are tuning in to a Goldilocks Productions presentation of the Quantum Path Radio Show with Dennis Anderson. Dennis is a psychic medium, a hypnotist, and spiritual teacher. He has had a gift to perceive the subtle energies from an early age, turning off the gift at the age of 20 to live life, love, and understand human behavior. To have it reawaken again during his late 30s due to a calling that was loud and needed to be answered, Dennis was urged by spirit to learn more, grow more, and share his gifts that others can benefit by exploring their own unique abilities. Call in now if you would like to speak to Dennis. The call in number is 713-955-0594. Press 1 so that you can get into the host queue. Oh. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Quantum Path Radio. My name is Dennis, and I am very excited once again to be here and sharing myself with you. Um, I What can I say? I just got off of the weekend here where, let's put it this way, I was at a psychic fair in St. Catharines. And let's put it this way, it had its ups and downs, uh, like in regards to volume-wise and stuff like that. And I can't say I blame people, let's put it this way. It was a very nice weekend, um, just a hint of rain on the last day. So I, you know what, it, it was a beautiful weekend, and you can't knock it, that's for sure. And I hope everyone out there and all the listeners that are uh, there so far anyway, that um, let's put it this way, I hope you had a wonderful weekend yourself. Now today, though, I am, I gotta admit, though, I've been feeling a little weird, you know, like I've been, uh, let's put it this way, I've, I've had my weird ups and downs here today, and uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm coming off of the weekend, and uh, just kind of reintegrating, I guess you could say, my energies back from, you know, touching so many other different people, but it actually kind of led me to some, I guess you could say, some awarenesses and some understanding a little bit, uh, and it, it, I was kind of, let's put it this way, earlier today I was going like, okay, what should I be discussing today? Like, what do I feel like I want to discuss? What do I want to talk about today? And there was a lot of different things, and let's put it this way, I, you know, like the, the, the gamut of ideas kind of flows through the head there, but when you're, let's put it this way, like I said, when I was kind of feeling what I was feeling, like I said, I've been kind of up and down here today, and that's natural, like, hey, we're all human. And you know what? You're going to feel those ups and downs sometimes, and and you know what? It's uh, there's a lot of I guess you could say this uh, new agey type uh, way of looking at things is that everything is love and light and so forth. Um, and you know what? And that's true. We do want to steer yourself towards that direction, I guess you could say, and and that's that's part of it. You know, like like you. That is part of life is something to aim towards, but what do you know what is light unless you don't know unless you know the dark okay what is the dark in your own self or whatever that uh you need to look at and express and come to terms with and then this way you too will actually know the light I guess you could say a little bit more. Um, just a couple of uh, housekeeping housekeeping issues here, I guess you could say. So if you are interested in uh, getting a hold of me, please feel free to call in. Uh, my number is uh, 713-955-0594. And uh, another couple of things, too, is, is that uh, you can contact me on my website or through my website at DennisJAnderson.com. And you could also reach me uh, through my 
office phone number as well at uh, 647-949-1429 if you do wish to talk to me or maybe perhaps book an appointment. Um, i got a couple other things coming up as well here. Like on uh, July 26th, I will be at Happy Soul in downtown Toronto. I'll be doing some psychic development there during the evening. Uh, so that one will be starting at about, if I'm not mistaken, 7 o'clock. We usually go to about uh, 9 o'clock. So it's a couple hours worth of interesting development type stuff, let's put it that way. And the subject is always going to change and it's always kind of a little bit different. Um, like I said, it's always fun anyway. It's always neat to see when people actually make some great connections and that's kind of the neat thing about it or to make connections for the first time. And they really surprise themselves when they actually just kind of like an image or an emotion or a feeling, and all of a sudden they can share that, and they and they get confirmation right away if that person is feeling that. So that, it, it's really kind of fun to watch. Uh, I'm also going to be on the following day. I'm also going to be at uh, on July 27th. I will be at Moonflowers in Stoville doing the same sort of thing. Um, basically doing a psychic development course there for a couple hours as well. And that one, I believe, is starting at about uh, 7 o'clock as well, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I guess I already have a caller. Uh, so if uh, Ross can put through caller 480 for me, too, for me, please, that would be fantastic. Hello. Hi, how are you? I am fantastic. Yourself? I am doing very well, thank you. Excellent. Who may yeah, I, first who first may time to check out the show. show. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm, I'm glad that you're checking it out. Uh, welcome. And uh, what's your name? And, and what's your my name, question for Yeah, you? my name is Mike, and I'm uh, calling from California. Okay. And uh, what kind of question do you have or comments? Yeah, uh, well, I was curious. Uh, I'm working on a couple projects, um, okay. and, you know, I have the, the J-O-B, you know, uh, I wait tables and bartend part-time, and I just kind of wanted uh, – where I'm currently at is kind of frustrating, and I don't know – a lot of it has to do with probably me in the sense of I'm so excited in, in anticipation of what's coming that I let that stuff kind of weigh at me. But I am looking for something that's a little bit financially better, and I was just curious if, you know, kind of, do you see me kind of standing pat and sucking it up, or is there some sort of potential move coming? Okay, well, let's have a look at that. Um, I, I, I am seeing some changes here, let's put it that way. And I think the big thing is, is that, first of all, it's just your realization, I guess you could say, that there is going to be a change happening or coming up. It is automatically triggering something in the back of your mind anyway that, oh, okay, it's now time for me to start going into something new, something different, something better sort of thing, something that's I'm, that I'm going to be a little bit more challenged in, I guess you could say. Um, although, let's put it this way, I have to give you guys credit that are waiting tables. Um, but let's face it, that's challenging enough on its own sometimes, you know what I mean? It's, uh, <laughs> Amen. It, it's, not an e it's not an easy thing, let me put it to you that way. Um, so the first thing that I'm actually getting here is, is like I just kind of put out a couple of cards just to kind of see where we're kind of going here. And the neat thing is is that I already, like, I, I got what's called the, I guess you could say, the, the fool card. Now, even though that uh, it sounds worse than what it is, it really isn't, actually. But what it means, actually, is, is that you're going to go on a new direction here, okay? Like, this is the start of something new, something in regards to your path sort of thing. Uh, so this is a fantastic thing. Let's put it that way. It's a really good card for change, and it's a really good card for you to start moving ahead on certain things. Honestly, the first thing that's kind of popping up into my head is finance. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but I'm just seeing you getting into like some sort of like a, uh, whether it be, I don't want to say banking. I, I just, I want to kind of go into I, the first word that's popping into my head is like mortgage, mortgage broker, that type of thing. Uh, I used so to do that. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. It just feels like there's something in the financial sort of field. Just feels more. I don't know. It just feels more 
you in some ways, and I don't know why. Um, now, one of the uh, one of the projects is uh, yeah. a business that I'll have a sales element to, and I have one partner who's a, a, a genius at uh, Google Ads and who's the money guy and successful in his industry, and then we have a tech person uh, as well. Uh, so there, that'll be that's launching as well. Oh, okay, so that sounds pretty cool then. So it sounds like you, you already kind of know where you're thinking of going here, and it, and it does feel actually, to be honest with you, it does feel pretty good uh, as you're describing it to me. Um, because let me put it to you this way: I am getting um, like let's put it this way: there's two men here involved. Uh, one's I guess you could say a little bit more on the emotional aspect of things, where the other one seems to be a little bit more calmer, but they do have a certain uh, strength about them, I guess you could say. It's almost like they, there's an internal drive in them uh, that does seem to be kicking in there. Uh, so let me put it to you this way. It, it, you know, like it, it's a really good thing here. Like I, I'm just seeing that you're going to be surrounded by quite a few people here that are going to be helping you along this path. It feels good. Uh, I would say, like, yes, go for it sort of thing. Like, I don't think that there's going to be any concerns there or anything like that. Um, just be wary, though, okay, because for some sort of reason, I'm just feeling that there's a little bit of a, oh, I don't know if it's like a past hesitation or something like that that's coming up uh, where it's almost leading you to a little bit of fear or something like that. Um, it's kind of like, oh, is this going to happen again or is this – situation going to come up again or something like that so just be wary of, of you know like some past fears you know because sometimes they kind of throw us off a little bit when we can actually be saying like you know what it's okay it's going to work out and stuff like that all right yeah no makes perfect sense great great like i said i i, I think it will be a really good thing for you to to explore so so just yeah, yeah, keep on trucking, and I do feel that there's going to be some really good, uh, uh, like it almost feels like, I want to say in three months here, you're going to be, let's put it this way, on the start of something really fantastic here, okay, so, awesome. the, and I feel like the, the, the wheels are in motion, let's put it that way, uh, it's just a matter of them just starting to get some traction now, okay? That's perfect, That's exact. that's exactly right. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. And thank you very much for calling in. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so, needless to say, anyway, like I was saying, like, uh, uh, I was at the psychic fair, and uh, it really did bring to light, I guess you could say, some aspects of, of light and dark uh, within our lives. And I am a firm believer uh, that we need to understand our darker sides. And, and I know that there's a lot of people out there that say, like, oh, it's a, it's a question of your shadow self or, or your, you know, whatever part of your ego or whatever. The thing is, is that no matter how you describe it or how you put it into place, like I said, you can't really know the light until you see the dark. Okay, or experience the dark. And the reason why I'm actually saying this is, is that I had a really interesting uh, moment with this one family. They were lovely people, actually, to be honest with you. This lady always comes to see me, and she's always there uh, at least once or twice a year. And she always brings her son with her. And I've known her son now for, I guess you could say, probably the last three or four years now. So he's he's a young fellow, you know, like he's maybe like 12, 13 years old now. Now, the interesting thing is, is that as I was looking at him and I was kind of like just picking up some of the energy, really good kid, you know, and that's the thing here. Is, and that's the basis that I'm trying to get at is, is that he's a really good kid. He's a, He was quite the little jokester already, you know, like you, you can really see that uh, – that um, aspect of his personality really coming out and starting to come through, I guess you could say, a little bit more. Now, the thing is, is that I was looking at it like, okay, well, should the mother, let's say, for example, but he was, um, let me put it to you this way, he was the kind of kid where I think he hid a lot of his feelings 
inside. And he was almost, uh, I guess you could say, a little bit afraid to express uh, his truer feelings to others, okay? Even, even if it, for that matter, to his mom. And uh, let, me, let me put it to you this way. Like, you could feel that there were certain things that were going on, like, within school and so forth. And as I asked him some questions, yes, there were some aspects of that. You know, like, you can tell that maybe something was going on there, okay, uh, that was bugging him or that was disturbing him. Now, he didn't really let in too much information, but he did use some interesting terms, uh, terms that kind of made me kind of like question, I guess you could say, like, okay, well, where is he going, you know, like on his path? Now, the thing is, is let me put it to you this way. I'm not one to correct anybody, uh, especially kids. Like, that's not really my place. I'm just there to hopefully bring to light, I guess you could say, that, you know what, there's potential there for you. You can achieve them if you really do want them. Um, and keep going towards them, you know, like you, whatever you choose in life, you can go for it, you can make a goal of it, and you can do it. And that's like with any age, <laughs> you know, it doesn't make a difference if you're 12 or 20 or, or 200 even for that matter. Like, let's put it this way, it doesn't make a difference. Hey, even Colonel Sanders, let's put it this way, he didn't make his money until he had turned, you know, until he was past his 65, you know, sort of thing. So... You know, when I when I see that in somebody young, though, like you, and I guess you could say I was relating my own instance of, you know, like I see my own daughter, for example, and, you know, and I, I always hope and pray, I guess you could say in some ways, that, you know, the best for them, you know, and that's what any parent does for their kids. Um, but the thing is, is that sometimes kids do have to experience uh, some of the, I guess you could say, some of the, the, the darker parts of life a little bit. Uh, and usually do they do. Usually and most kids, where do they experience it? Is in school. You know, like whether it be they are ridiculed a little bit maybe due to, who knows, like in my instance, for example, because I was a, a slightly overweight kid as compared to everybody else, uh, and yes, I was ridiculed a little bit for that, um, but let me put it to you this way. It turned me into understanding a little bit more of who I was later on in life. Um, all these things are there to create, I guess you could say, an understanding of who we are and where we are. And that led me to question, like, okay, should we be protecting our kids that much where they are... I guess you could say in that safety bubble and they don't have to worry about experiencing anything of the, I guess you could say, of the darker nature on their perspective. And the thing is, is as I'm looking at this, I, I really say that, you know, like, I, I, I'm, and I, in a lot of ways I'm still kind of processing it. But the thing is, is that, you know, like, my mom, let me put it to you this way, she, like, we always had this huge garden, and um, she grew, always had these, let's say, for example, like carrots and peas and everything like that growing in this garden. And as a kid, what did I learn to do? Well, let's put it this way, I, I went to the garden, I, I grabbed some baby carrots pretty much that were coming out of the and I just plucked them out, rubbed the dirt off, and I ate it straight. <laughs> you know, like, I didn't wash them. You know, and, uh, you know, like, I, I got dirty, you know, and, you know, I probably ate a little bit of dirt here and there and stuff like that. And the thing is, is that it was okay. You know, like, it didn't kill me. It didn't make me sick. And, if anything, it actually made me understand um, in life that it's okay to get dirty. And it's okay. It just makes you stronger in many ways. And now I look at our uh, society a little bit, and we almost protect a little bit too much. And, uh, you know, like, let the kids explore who they are. And I know it seems dangerous out there, and it seems scary sometimes, and we do want to protect them. But let them, you know, let the kids take their chances sometimes here and there. Let them grow. Let them become the people that they need to be. 
that's how they develop into you know responsible young adults who look at other people with respect you know and with care so like i said always try to throw that in there if you can you know like always try to have that balance there and it looks like i have another caller waiting for me so if i can get uh, Roz to bring through uh number two or three for me that would be fantastic Hello, caller. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, Good. I was, can you hear me okay? I'm sorry? Uh, <laughs> I wanted to know if you could hear me okay. Oh, I can hear you fine. I can hear you fine. Oh. That's not a problem. Uh, I'm just going to get your name, though. Oh, it's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. So what can I do for you today, Michelle? Well, I'm uh, stressing over, you know, what's, how things are going to turn out for the rest of the year, and I'm waiting to, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for another job, and I have this one in particular in mind. It's on the East Coast, and I was wondering if you saw me getting it. Okay, well, let's have a, a look at that. I'm just going to... Give the cards a quick shuffle as I kind of tune into you here. And as I do, though, I am kind of getting that there, it just feels like, okay, it's not quite yet. It almost feels like it's a, uh, it feels like a little bit in the distance yet. Um, and I don't know why it's getting held up, um, but it almost feels like there's something there that's just kind of holding it back. So it's almost like maybe on their end, um, due to, maybe due to the hiring process or something like that. It just feels a little bit um, like there's a delay or something like that going on there. Uh, so it almost feels as if it may be another, I want to say maybe about six weeks to eight weeks possibly. Okay. Um, now, as like I said, I'm just kind of giving the cards a quick shuffle here, and I'm just kind of putting out a few. So let's put it this way. I'm I'm getting some really good, strong cards here. Um, the thing is, is that what you, it almost feels as if you do have to make certain that you are contacting them, okay? Like, I'm kind of getting like there's a need for you to be a little bit more, hmm, I don't want to say assertive, but just kind of like letting them know that you're there, that you're waiting uh, for a response or something like that, Okay. Um, okay. it's almost like they're looking for that or something like that because it's almost like they're but be patient okay too like don't bug them every week or anything like that but just give them a call just to let them know that hey you know what I'm still here I'm just wondering if there's anything going on if there you know or if there's something that I can do or if you need something that um, to help lock this in or something like that okay um, but be patient. I do feel that there is some good things here coming. Um, and let's put it this way. It, it almost feels like there's somebody, though, that is going to be looking at this, that is going to be making the final decision. And it actually feels pretty good. Okay, so, but he feels like he's an older gentleman or something like that, but he just feels like he's kind of mulling things over and you know, weighing the pros, cons, and all that kind of stuff. He He's the kind of guy where he takes his time. Um, <laughs> you know, like I, I probably just know like who he, you're talking about. <laughs> okay, yeah, because it just feels like he's just kind of like, like he's, like he's almost too particular sometimes or a little yeah. bit maybe too detailed or something. And <laughs> let's put it this way, it's, sometimes that can be a little frustrating. Like, you kind of want somebody that, oh, make the decision already, you know. <laughs> but he's, And that's the thing there is that he's kind of holding that up a little bit there. Um, but I do feel that there is going to be something good coming out of this, but just be patient, okay? And it feels like, you know, like some good things are going to definitely come. Um, but like I said, just kind of keep things in balance here and, you know, like let them know that you're still there, that you're still interested, but when you mention to them, you know, and the the whole purpose of that is, is to keep your name fresh in their mind, okay? You don't want them to forget you. Yeah. So that's why I'm just saying, like, just let them know that you're still there, but don't make it a habit of calling them, like, every week or anything like that. 
just let them know though that you're you're still there waiting in the wings, waiting. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think okay. there's gonna be some good things though that'll come out of that. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank okay. you. You're very Thanks. welcome. Bye. It was my pleasure. Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah, have a good night. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So. Um, now, the interesting thing is, is that uh, I was actually talking to um, to some other people and stuff like that, and uh, like during the course of the weekend, and it was actually kind of interesting um, because of the fact that, like I said, there's all types of people that always come through at a psychic fair, you know, like, and it's usually always, you know, let's put it this way, somebody's seeking something, they want some answers or whatever. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that there's, seems to be a very good trend though with uh, many people, um, that they are exploring an aspect of themselves that they've never really explored before. Okay. And what I mean by that actually is, is that there's a lot of people out there that are, let's say for example, like they're exploring the healing aspect of who they are. You know, like they've been taking Reiki courses, they've been taking uh, maybe Quantum Touch or something like that. Something to actually help improve themselves or something to expand their own knowledge within their their own right or whatever. And the, the nice thing about it, though, is that as we grow and as we develop and as we awaken spiritually, you know, like that, and this is part of a person's awakening. Um, that, yeah, you're going to be wanting to figure out, like, okay, what can I do to help other people? What can I do to, to you know, make a positive change or something like that within somebody's life? So, and that's a great thing, you know, like, uh, and it's nice to see that with people, you know, like that they want to do something to try to help elevate, I guess you could say, the world that little bit. Uh, there was another younger man. Uh, I would say he's in his 20s, maybe er- maybe early 30s now. And uh, let me put it to you this way: he was a, he was a very nice guy, you know. Like uh, you know, he's a, he works out uh, quite a bit actually. I believe he actually works as a personal trainer. Um, but there's neat things that were going on with him, you know. Uh, and he's once again he's another regular customer of mine, I guess you could say. And uh, um, as he was coming through. You know, he he did go. Let's put it this way: like he he ended up uh, hurting himself uh, over the past like a few months back. But it gave him a chance, though, to really, I guess you could say, perceive what he really wanted to do. And sometimes the universe has a weird and wacky tendency to to throw those things at us. You know, to say like, hey, you know what? We're here. But you're not really paying attention to us. So now it's going to, you've got no choice. You're going to have to pay attention to us. And sometimes, and that's the funny thing sometimes. Sometimes, you know, like an experience is going to come up or a, uh, a life thing is going to happen uh, where all of a sudden, like, it almost feels like, wow, okay, like I've just been thrown off course or what you think is the course that you're going to be on. And then all of a sudden, the universe is giving this to you and saying, like, no, nope, you're going to have to start reevaluating what it is that you're going to be doing. And I, I personally have had that myself, actually, and that's the funny thing about this. Um, <laughs> you know, like, because as I go, like, even myself, like, I, I'm an electrician by trade, okay, and that's the, the funny thing about this. And I thought many years ago that. You know, like uh, I would be exploring this aspect of who I am because I'm a technical kind of guy. Like I love, let's put it this way, exploring, you know, like why things work or how things work and so forth. And um, as an electrician, let's put it this way, like it just seemed like a natural thing for me because I was always an energy type of reader slash worker, that type of thing. And the uh, the aspect of that, though, is that I was actually pretty good with it, you know. Like, I, I enjoyed it uh, to many aspects, I guess you could say, the technical aspects I really did enjoy. Um, it really taught me a lot of things. 
things about energy, um, and not just you know like typical electrical energy that's within your house right now, like that's illuminating your lights or or uh, powering your TV sort of thing, but actually the energy of why people are the way they are. You know, like how does energy work within a person? And I guess you could say that, you know, like I haven't seen auras uh, since I was a kid. Um, and if you're interested, you can always check out my other website, which is auraphotogenic.com, um, because that is another aspect of, of things that I do. As an energy reader, I, I look at people and I can see the, I guess you could say, the colors around them. So the thing is, though, is that as I was kind of growing and, and doing my thing, uh, as an electrician, even though that I was enjoying it in a lot of ways and that I was uh, quite good at it, but the thing is, is that I wasn't really, I still wasn't really fulfilled. And the universe started giving me these signs to say that, oh no, you might want to rethink about what it is exactly that you're doing. Do I still do it now? Yes, just not to the extent that I used to. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, and that's the thing, you know, like even within your own lives, you may feel that, you know, like, and I, and I see this within so many others as well, that gone are the days where um, you're going to be, let's say, for example, within a, a career for the next 40 years or 45 years. Um, and the interesting thing is, is that you may end up changing your career path. And that's okay, you know, because we, you change, you know, like your life perspective changes, the way you look at things change, or you may hold on to that career, and that's okay, but maybe the things that you do when you're away from it, when you're at home, the hobbies that you have, explore it, you know, like, and that's what I'm trying to get at, explore who you are in a full aspect and enjoy the different things that you are like all the aspects of who you are you know like if you're a healer type of person well then explore that healing aspect enjoy it you know i had one lady she came through and she had so much green around her which is coming from her heart chakra and that all that green is basically energy of of unconditional love and connection with others healing and teaching and she had a lot of green but she knew it, you know, like she knew that she had a lot of healing within her that she could do. And that's what she did. She explored it, you know, like she explored the the, the healing component. Uh, and she started taking the courses like the Reiki and the massage therapy and all those things together. Because she wanted to, she was starting to get pulled in that direction. Because the energy of her was pulling her in that direction. So she just naturally fell in line with that and she was happy you know and that was the nice thing about it she she really enjoyed what she did and i guess i have another caller uh so if Ross can bring through 504 for me that would be fantastic please and thank you hello my name's debbie hi debbie how are you i'm good um i uh it's funny you were talking about a healer because that's what I explore in my life. You know, doing I took Reiki and um, I just took something called of the Heart, which is working with codes, um, you know, the core issues of stuff. And but I have a, a regular job right now, and um, everywhere I go, I have a bad really toxic manager, and I don't know if it's to push me out so I do healing, but then I get so worried about, you know, supporting myself. I don't know if I should do it as a hobby or something. Yes, and and I totally understand where you're coming from, Um, because a lot of people do, and let's face it, you know, like, that's a natural assumption, too. And I've been, honestly, like, (laughs) we all go through that in many, many ways. Uh, Because let's put it this way. You know, like, we do have to eat, you know, and we do have to take care of, 
certain aspects, you know, like whether you have to pay rent or if you have a house, you know, like pay the right. bills, the mortgage, all those things, that, you know, and that's a natural assumption as much as we want to be able to, you know, like when we get excited about things, you know, like we want to jump in there and we want to, um, I guess you could say, go in with both feet, you know, and then let's see what happens or where it takes us. Well, sometimes, yes, you do have to um, ease into it a little bit more. So, let's put it this way, though. You can still, let's say, for example, keep working at what it is that you're doing, okay, to mm-hmm. get you, you know, the, 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 the same sort of money sort of thing, and then stability of that security, I guess you could say, of the money that's coming in. Because, mm-hmm. hey, you know, like you need that security, too, and that's totally natural. Now, Mm -hmm. the thing is, though, is that, yes, you know, and I would say, yes, keep exploring, and I am actually feeling that for you, is is to keep exploring uh, who you are, you know, like in regards to the healing component, and, Mm -hmm. but maybe start to ramp up some of the advertising, okay, and this is what I'm kind of getting for you right now, is is to keep exploring the, the advertising of who you are and what you can offer people. You see, the the greatest thing that we can do is to be in service to others, okay? Okay. And let's put it this way. Everything that we do in many ways, I guess you'd say, is to be in service to others. Because in turn, you know, like we're in service to something higher. Um, But the thing is, is that when you are in service to others by healing, by giving, and by doing the things that you do, when you are passionate about it, that person is going to feel it. Okay, Mm -hmm. and what you can do too is uh, start asking them to give you, let's say, for example, like, okay, you know, if you enjoyed what you have, well, please let your friends know. And if your friends come and see me, maybe I'll give you a discount on the next time that you come. You see what I mean? So you're kind of you're building up something, and it may take a little time. Okay. And then you may get to the point where all of a sudden it's kind of like, okay, I'm getting too busy with things on the evenings and weekends and now I maybe I have to start cutting back on other things. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you may get to that point. You know, and, and that's the thing here is, is you don't know until you try. So, okay. I, and, and that's the thing, like but be passionate about the things that you have and that you're, and what you can do and what you can offer to people. You see, mm-hmm. And that's when you're going to find your path is going to be either working for you or it's not going to work for you. And that's something, too, that let's put it this way. All all of us is, if you want to call them light workers, if you want to call them whatever, um, right. that is something that we all go through because we all question, like, okay, just how far <laughs> should we go with it? And right. the thing is, is that... Like I said, take it step at a time, step at a time, step at a time. And you'll know that, let's put it this way, when people come to you and they start, the opportunities start flowing to you and start moving towards you and start opening up other avenues, then you know that, okay, I'm on the right path here. Now, getting back to the other aspect of your your current job, too, is that toxic person. Yes. And I totally sympathize and understand because let me put it to you this way, I've had a couple of those myself. Okay. <laughs> so I think many of us, and I think, let's put it this way, many of us have, you know, in, in a lot okay. of ways. Um, but the thing is, though, is that uh, what it comes down to, though, is how you look at that person, Okay. Well, the way I like to look at, let's say, for example, somebody that doesn't rub me the right way. And it's usually what ends up happening is, is that I am not in, I guess you could say, uh, their alignment of their energy. Right. Okay? And that's why it feels wrong to me. Awesome. That's why it doesn't feel right. Uh, and maybe, yes, maybe there is somebody else out there that is more in alignment with them. And that's fine. But the thing is, is how do you deal with that? You know, like you can look at that person and you can sit there and cross your arms and say, like, you know what? I I can't deal with you. 
because they have that aspect about them. And I really do feel that they're kind of like the judgmental, pointy finger type of person. Um, mm -hmm. So the thing is, though, is that what you can do is you can look at them and not give them the emotional response that they're looking for. Okay? Yeah. Um, so the thing is, is that um, because sometimes that's what they're looking for. They're looking for an yeah. emotional response. You know, something right. in, because when they push a, a button, they're looking for something in a reaction back. And yeah. when they don't get that emotional response back, then they're not feeding their ego anymore. You're not feeding right. their, their, I guess, and some will call it psychic vampirism or... Uh, yeah, she's definitely it, all that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, and they are. They're kind of like, you know, like the, the human leeches. And stuff. You know, they want to suck energy off of you. So the thing is, though, is that really what it comes down to is, is don't give them that emotional response. Because what ends up happening is, is if there's no emotion involved, they're not getting any energy from that. Okay? And then they right. start to kind of cool down from that. And I trust it. I've had to do that myself. Like I've uh, done experiments uh, with, with, a, with one boss that I had, and I envisioned, let's say, for example, like mirrors going up all the way around me. And right. that was kind. Of, let's put it this way: I did not get the reaction I was kind of hoping for because what ended up happening is the energy that they were putting out to me was getting reflected back on them. Okay, so they were in that and seeing what, who they were back from me by uh, that reflection. And when they get that reflection, you know, most of the time they don't like that. So then they get a little bit more angry or a little bit more antsy or a little bit more toxic. So well, that's it a different way. That's what happened because I knew she was kind of, she's kind of bipolar-ish, I guess. And, you know, it's happened to other people. And so I knew kind of to be amused by her rant. And um, so she kind of upped the ante on something just she, I would have never expected. You know, like her food got cold because of me because I took five extra minutes. And that threw me off. And she did get emotion because I was so, I was like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? Like yes. something you weren't expecting. I totally understand where you're coming from from that. Uh, and I had the same sort of experience, too, uh, when my boss was doing that to me. Um, you know, and it could be just something that would just kind of, like, make them trigger or fly off that handle that little bit. And it's unexpected because you got to remember, psychologically, that's what they're trying to do. You know, like, they're mm -hmm. trying to, like, in their own subconscious, they go, like, well, if I react off, when they're not expecting it, I'm going to get an emotional response back, and that'll make me feel better, make me feel stronger, because now I'm in control. But when you're the one that's in control of who you are, they no longer have that anymore. And in turn, what ends up happening is they don't have that strength and control and power over you anymore. So how, I how do you even tried... Go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Hello? Okay. Hello? Hi. Hi. You, you're still there with me? <laughs> Hello? Hi. Hello? Oh, Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah. I said, how do, you, how do you get it back, your power? Well, well, the thing is, is that um, it comes down to you realizing it within yourself that you have the power, and, and it's not a matter of you getting it back, because you always had it. You always had it in control. It's just that what it comes down to is you let somebody else take that control away from you. Like, mm -hmm. In some ways, you're kind of giving it up to them. But when you understand that within yourself, psychologically, you kind of look at it now and say, you know what, you don't control me. You don't really, you know, like, I'm, it, my emotions are my emotions, and I give them to who I want to give them. And when you realize that within yourself, 
Nobody else can take that away from you, okay, because it's you that's in control. And I use the, <laughs> in my development classes, I use a lot of that same analogy, I guess you could say, with, let's say, for example, if even Jesus came down right now and sat down beside you and he said, oh, I want you to uh, run in front of uh, these these moving cars and don't worry about it, I'll protect you. Would you? Now, I'm hey. using that as a very hypothetical question, and you'd be surprised how many people would say, like, well, it's Jesus, and he's going to protect me. Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, one, Jesus probably won't ask that of you, for starters. And two, right. you're the one that's in control of your life, you know, and that's the thing here. Um, because let me put it to you this way. When we are born... When we are given, I guess you could say, the spiritual life, um, and whether we are in spirit or whether we're here, uh, incarnated on this plane, we are given a thing called free will. And that's one of the laws of the universe. Okay, so we have that within us to sit there mm -hmm. and say, like, yes, this is my energy. I can give it to whoever I want in regards to, let's say, for example, love or connection with somebody else that we do care about. And we can do that very easily. But we can also not give it to somebody for somebody that is not toxic or somebody that should not, let's say, for example, receive it from us because they are toxic mm -hmm. and they're not conducive to who we are. So you understanding that and you under, you know, knowing that within yourself mm -hmm. will automatically make that happen in a lot of ways. And it works okay. sub you know, subconsciously at first. And that's the thing here. And, and that's, in essence, what it comes down to. And let's put it this way. That person may try to push a button and keep pushing a button now and again. To right. To get that out of you. But mm -hmm. the thing is, though, is that what's going to end up happening is they're going to get tired of trying to do that if they're not getting any response. And the next thing you know, they start to fade it away. Okay. <laughs> in some ways. Okay? So... Don't worry about it. I, I really do feel that they are going to change, okay? They're not going to bother you in so much anymore, I don't think. Because, like I said, I think you really do understand that you have that control and that power within you. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a matter of you just understanding that, you know what? I don't need to give my emotional energy to you anymore. And when they realize okay. that, they will start to fade away. Okay. That'd be awesome. Thank you. I you're very welcome. My pleasure. Okay. Bye-bye. So that was... <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope I didn't cough in anybody's ear on that one. Uh, <laughs> I tried not to anyway. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, what uh, our last caller really did bring up some good points there, you know, like in regards to who we give our energy to and and why do we give our energy to people, you know, like... I totally understand and totally get that, you know what, you want to be able to give those high vibration sort of energies. And some people will say, like, well, what is that? You know, well, that's everything like love and peace and compassion and, and hope and all those things. You know, like, yeah, those are good ones to give away to somebody. You know, those are good to to pass on to others. Because what are you doing? You're helping to elevate that person that little bit. And sometimes that's all it takes is just a small little bit of elevation of energy to help make that person change, to realize. And, and and there is good out there, you know, and you have the good within you too, you know. And um, and that's it's a common theme, you know. But yet when you have somebody that, let's put it this way, you know, like they love to push the button, you know, or they will... They all, and, and some people can be very sneaky, you know, like they can be very tricky. They can use language in a way where you don't realize it, but they are taking something away from you. And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to give them that emotion. You don't have to give them those feelings of doubt or those feelings of uh, anger or anything like that. Because you're the one that's in control of your life, you know, and that's uh, that the, really is the biggest part of this. And the same thing goes for even that young man, you know, like I was looking at him kind of going like, 
you know, you can, and I, I was seeing, let's put it this way, the self, uh, what I want to call self-talk, okay? So in other words, what are they saying to themselves as they're talking? What are they uh, describing themselves as, you know? Um, and let me put it to you this way, you know, like, like I said, this young man or whatever, he was 12 years old, okay, maybe 13, something like that. But he used the term idiot when he described himself. And a lot of people, like, he was kind of joking around or whatever about it, you know, like trying to make light of it. And I kind of had mentioned to him, and I said this in front of his mom as well, you know, I said, you know, you should really try to avoid that term. You know, because really, what does it do? You know, like, you're not you're not an idiot, you know, and nobody out there is. Because we're not. Everybody has their own, I guess you could say, their own superpower, their own aspect of uh, brightness within them. And, and it doesn't make a difference what it is. You know, like, let me put it to you this way. I'm not Einstein. <laughs> You know, and I I never will be either. And there's many others out there that, you know, but that doesn't make me an idiot. You know, and sometimes, yeah, I joke around a little bit and I kind of use some self-deprecating humor to uh, uh, to sit there and, and go like, oh, that was kind of a silly move on my part or whatever. But you know what, that's life. You know, and and when you are looking to achieve something, when you're looking to uh, express who you are, um, let me put it to you this way: you know, like do it with the best possible language within yourself, okay? And when you do that, you're going to sit there and say, like, you know what? Yeah, maybe I haven't tried this before, but you know what? I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Because you don't know where it's going to take you. And you never will, unless you actually try it. You know, in order to learn something about something. You know, like, and, uh, like uh, my dad was a lifelong learner. Same with my mom, too, actually, in a lot of ways. Like, my dad, uh, he passed away when he was 86. And uh, up until a few years beforehand, he... Uh, he was kind of like having some, I guess you could say, some dementia-type issues and so forth. But before that, um, he, was, he was a very smart man, but yet he never completed his high school. Um, but yet he was very smart because at that time, uh, let me put it to you this way, they either had two courses or two tracks, I guess you could say, in their lives. And this is back in the, you know, like in the 30s sort of thing. So either you went to a trade school or you went to an engineering sort of path. Well, he followed in his father's footsteps, and he went with the trade sort of side of things. So therefore, he didn't finish high school. He didn't need to because he went into the trades. Uh, and he became a cabinet maker slash uh, carpenter sort of thing. But very smart, you know, like he could figure things out in his head that, you know, was mind-boggling in some ways when it came to putting things together. Uh, and I remember, even after he retired, what did he do? You know, like, even as a cabinet maker, what was he doing? You know, like, he was, you know, after, like, when he was seven, he was taking an engine out of a vehicle, you know, just to do something to it. I don't know what, but he wanted to do it, so he did. You know, and that's the thing. He tried. And that's something that I recommend to everybody, is, is that if something interests you, well, try it. It's not going to hurt. He was also a hobby beekeeper. You know, like he had like uh, uh, 10, 15 hives usually on a typical sort of every year basis. And uh, one year he he was ill and he was in the hospital during the summer. So it fell upon me to take care of running the, you know, the hives for that, uh, that summer. So I ended up, you know, uh, creating supers and making the combs for the inside and, and the, the frames and so forth for them. And you know what? That was fun. And I really did enjoy myself. And I was only 15 or something like that or 16 at the time. But 
it really kind of awakened me into understanding that, you know what, I can do a lot of different things or more things than what other people think. And the thing is, is that what I'm trying to say, and, and hopefully can impart to you as well, that uh, you as well can, can do many different things and explore different things and enjoy your life. You know, like try to get out there, try to do the things that you never thought were possible, but yet now maybe it's okay to try. You know, like I know, let's put it this way, like my mom, she was, <laughs> you know, as, as much as I loved her and, and so forth, like yeah, I guess you could say every kid does, um, but they're the best hypnotists in the world, you know, and let's face it, you know, like they, within their understanding, I guess you could say, sometimes they, and fathers too for that matter, or maybe our older siblings or whoever it may be, but let's put it this way. You know, like, they love to impose things on us that we don't realize because of the fact that, um, one, they don't want to see us hurt or fail or whatever. But you don't know within yourself until you look at something and say, like, oh, I'm going to try it, I'm going to give it a shot, and then next thing you know, yes, you may fail at something. And you may fail at the first time, and maybe even the second time. But you know what? You don't know you, until you try and you you figure it out that, oh, well, maybe this just isn't in my path. Put it this way. Like, I'm not going to go out and, you know, try becoming a, a brain surgeon. <laughs> you know, that's the thing here. Um, but I am going to try to, you know, achieve something different in my life. I'm going to try to go a little bit further. I'm going to try to take that extra step and cross that line and uh, in the sand. You know, like, don't let those things that uh, we saw or that we heard as children to affect us who we are now. You know, and if you want to become something more, well, then try it. Give it a shot. You know, like, put yourself out there. And, yeah, you know what? It takes a certain amount of vulnerability, and it takes a certain amount of courage and strength, but work on it. Do it. You know, like, it's not going to hurt. Um, so, anyway, that pretty much almost, wow, that hour flew by really super fast, and I, I do want to thank our uh, our callers that had called in. A uh, wonderful group there. Thank you. And I, I am very grateful for you uh, calling in. And once again, if you are interested in reading with me, um, feel free to give me a, uh, or check out my website at dennisjanderson.com um, on, the, on the site. And you can also check me out on uh, orophotogenic.com well, because that's what I do as well Like when I'm at psychic fairs. Like I'll do aura photography and so forth. Um, once again, check me out uh, if you're in the Toronto area, and I really hope you do, uh, on July 26th at Happy Soul for a psychic development workshop that I'm going to be holding there at 7 o'clock, and same thing on the July 27th at Moonflowers in Stouffville. Uh, I will be in a psychic uh, development class there. And then, on July 29th, I don't know how much room is left there, but I do, I am going to be at Being in Balance, uh, which is in, uh, uh, what is that now, not Schaumburg, I don't want to say Schaumburg, it's just north of Brampton anyway, Shelburne, I believe it is. (laughs) Uh, Boy, I hope I'm saying that right anyway. Uh, I will be at Being in Balance uh, to do all our photos there. I think there's a couple of spots left. Uh, Not too many, though. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. And I do wish you all uh, love and light. And uh, thank you very much for joining me. And I am so grateful for, uh, for being with you today as well. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful week as well. Bye bye. And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check, in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. 
Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our Geico bill with the Geico app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the Geico app. Thank you.